So you want me to start sharing how I like eat food? <laughs> so a lot of people have been asking that, right? To start sharing videos about like what I eat, like what I'm cooking, sharing recipes and stuff. But here's the thing. I, I don't really do anything normal if you haven't noticed. Well, I mean, it's normal, but like I'm kind of against the grain that way. And my brain is the same way with like food. In the way that like I do and don't follow recipes. So like right now you're going to watch me literally make up a recipe for sourdough noodles. Um, I thought, well, you know, that sounds good. I've actually never made them before. Let's make them together. Um, and that is probably something you should expect from me if you ever like decide that like come to my apprentice program and like, you, like learn with me and stuff like that. It's free and all that stuff. But um, I'm not going to be like, I know all. I'm like, I've never done this shit. Let's read about it. Do it together. Figure it out. Cool. We both know how to do it now. <laughs> That's just part of being human, right? Um, so sometimes when I work with sourdough, and first of all, I work with 100% hydration. Look at that crusty old jar. <laughs> um, she's nice and healthy, though. Don't be mean. Um, I work with 100% hydration. And for those of you that are new to sourdough or have never made sourdough, basically what that means is there's equal parts of water to flour to this. That means if I add one cup of flour, I add one cup of water. And I find that 100% hydration is so easy to work with. There's not like, oh my God, you don't have to weigh out like, particular molecules of your sourdough starter dough and this and this and that and there's all these complex steps oh my god when it's more water like it's so much easier to use I can measure it with this broken ass cup measure that I'm going to use so sometimes I just like swap out ratios in a in a recipe right so I've got my random personal <laughs> recipe book here and I'm looking at my egg pasta recipe right and I don't even know why I call it that because it doesn't even have that much egg in it. And the other pasta recipe that I always make has way more eggs in it. And I just don't, I don't call it that. <laughs> but whatever. Um, so this recipe calls for two and a half cups flour. Um, so I am going to go with one cup of sourdough starter and a cup and a half of flour. So the thing to remember when you're working with 100% hydration, see how fluffy that is? Uh, I just fed it this morning. Uh, is that this cup right here, even though it's a little over full, whatever, is half water, half flour. So roughly there's a half cup of flour in there and a half cup of water in there. That's important, and that's why I talk about using 100% um, hydration when you're swapping out and turning a recipe into like a sourdough recipe instead. Um, which is really handy if you're like gluten intolerant, you want to, you know, make the grains you do eat more digestible and things like that. Um, you can swap it out easy versus if you're like, oh, so and so many grams and this and this and that, it'd be really hard to like just look at a normal recipe that calls for two and a half cups of flour and figure out that ratio. So this is a half cup flour and a half cup of water. So that means that I'm going to probably add another it calls for a half a cup of milk i'm not going to use milk probably i'm going to because sometimes i want these to rise a little bit uh and if you use too much fat it's harder for it to rise because i want a nice chewy noodle again i'm fully making this video this video up yeah clearly i'm doing that <laughs> i'm fully making this recipe up right in front of you but spoiler alert if this doesn't work i'm not posting this shit <laughs> Right? Like, I, like, so you know it's going to work. Um, if you're watching this, you know it's going to work. So that was a half a cup of water um, and a half a cup of flour. And but it, this recipe wants two and a half cups of flour. So let's go ahead and put a cup and a half. I think I did that math wrong. Or right. If I did it wrong, that's okay. We'll see what happens anyways. So a cup and a half of flour. Shit. Didn't get a half, um, <laughs> didn't get a half cup measure. Let me grab one. Let me see if I can find one. Well, that's a miracle. Nobody... Uh, my teenagers are tasked with helping me keep this kitchen clean because, like, my ass shouldn't have to, like, do all the dishes and then cook and then cook and then... You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, you guys can get up and do some shit. And they put things never in the same drawers. Now, my daughter is very good about it. She will put things... She will get frustrated when things aren't put correctly, but... Um, my son and his girlfriend are really bad at like, like it's, it's a challenge to find things. Anyhow, so I found my half cup measure. What do I need it for? Flour. So where's my big cup? There it is. So I'm going to put a cup. I got a big old container down here, so I can't reach it up. 
uh, for you to see. I'm going to put a, a measure out a cup of flour. You like how my words are coming out really smooth today? So what you didn't see down there is I scooped flour, dumped it into my cup, and then slid off. If you just scoop up with a cup, you get way more than a cup in there, and then whatever recipe you're making, just in general, even if you're following some recipe, or like if you're following this recipe, um, you will get too much flour in your cup. So I'm going to put a cup of flour in there. <laughs> and then I'm going to take this off because it's hot as balls on here, in here, on here, whatever. And then I'm going to measure out a half cup. So that's technically one and a half, two cups of flour, needs another half a cup. I did my math wrong. Needs another half a cup. Um, I'm going to put the written out recipe in the description. <laughs> so if you're watching this and haven't looked at the comment section or like any of that stuff or the description, wherever you're watching at, uh, you can see what I've done. I, I'm good at remembering what I've done, so don't worry, I'll write it down. Um, so we've got a cup of sourdough starter, and two cups of all-purpose flour. Okay, so then uh, this recipe, if I was making a normal noodle recipe, says a half a cup of milk and two eggs beaten. I'm probably going to do a half a cup of broth. I've got some broth left over that I need to use. I, I use broth. Ah, oh, there's not a half cup there. Hold on, let me get some water. I use broth if, there, if you're making a savory um, recipe and it calls for water use broth because first of all you're getting more nutrition in there more healthy animal fats and more flavor um you know but if you're like making a chocolate cake and it's like oh it needs a cup of water that don't don't sub that out <laughs> but like if you're going to make rice or something like that and it calls for like two cups of whatever you know of water use broth okay so a half a cup of watered down broth <laughs> um and then i got some eggs here oh right in front of me okay two eggs it says to beat them in the recipe i'm just gonna put them in the bowl um they'll get beaten up plenty i'm gonna grab two regs eggs <laughs> i uh said regs on purpose i forgot that i'm not talking to my family you should probably know that last night i didn't get to bed until like pretty late because of like some family stuff like we're okay it was just like a scary shock you know and so I'm like I'm a little out of it more than usual it's all right this is just my reality so two eggs I'm gonna show you something these are these are eggs from my chickens clearly um uh, well not clearly maybe you think you can get blue ones in the store maybe these days look you see how this one's green brown on the outside she's blue on the inside I don't know if it shows in the video but she's like really pretty blue um and I we made that chicken. <laughs> it's just a mutt. Like, it just mixed with, like, a uh, Easter egg -er and, like, a uh, Rhode Island Red and, like, whatever else. And it just popped up chicken that laid green outside, blue inside. So that was kind of cool. Um, okay, so it calls for salt. Some people don't put salt in their noodles. They argue all kinds of technical reasons that it doesn't, like, cook well or this well. But I, I really don't care. I'm going to add <laughs> salt because um, I think that it will give it a good amount of flavor. And I like to use, um, like this is Celtic sea salt. It's a little spendy, but it's so much different than even just like Himalayan salt or definitely table salt. It's horrible for you. This one has so many nutrients in her, lots of good magnesium and things like that. But also she's got like, I want to say like 20 or at least 15 or 20 percent less sodium content than the average salt so i'm helping nourish my body because we really need healthy salts but also like not jacking up sodium levels right so i'm gonna put a teaspoon of salt in that oh funny thing if i don't actually remember what i'm doing the video does <laughs> and i can re-watch it um, okay, so now some butter, because I do want fats in here. We've, I just don't think the, I feel like the milk would be too much. So it says a tablespoon of butter. I'm going to grab some butter from over here. That's approximately a tablespoon. I mean, I stuck a tablespoon in there. And I need to grab a spoon. Honestly, sometimes I just grab, if, if something calls, like a recipe calls for like one-fourth cup butter, I'm like, huh, that looks about one-fourth. <laughs> you know, I'm just, again, I don't really, I don't really follow rules, people. So, oh, I missed the bowl. Missed the bowl. See? All right. And I'm totally going to use a microwave to melt.
about this. So don't at me in the comment section about how dangerous they are. I, you know, I'm aware, but like pick your battles of what you want to remove from your life. And I don't need to take a bunch of time and dirty up a big old pan to melt a tablespoon of butter. Plus, I like my microwave because I can turn the power down. So give me one second. Well, most microwaves can do that. Mine is really handy, has the stuff in the way of the microwave. Okay. Let's see if that's melted in about 10 seconds. Um, also, the thing about microwaves, you know you're holding one up to your head when you talk on your phone or staring at the screen, right? Kind of. <laughs> um, so pick your battles. Okay. In about 10 seconds, I had a tablespoon of melted butter. I'm going to dump that right in there. Okay. I'm going to take a drink of, that's not broth water, that's just, no, that's, is that broth? I don't know. This is my water. All right, now I need to stir this. And we'll see, see what it's done. You don't have to have something fancy like this to stir. It's a dough hook thing. You can use a fork. If you use a fork to like stir dough, find one that has rounded edges on the handle because the ones that have sharp like squared edges, when you, it'll dig into your hand. Rounded ones don't hurt. Um, just for anybody who's got sensory issues like me. Um, so I'm just stirring it right you guys are going to regret asking for food videos. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So, I think it looks a little bit... Oh, it's my printer making noises. Thought we were getting fucking burgled. Um, I think it looks a little bit too... It's too wet for noodles, right? But I don't want to overdo it. I'm going to add... Let me grab another thingy. This one's one third. Let's try that. <laughs> Let's see what happens if I add one third cup of flour. Again, all the ratios, if this video worked out and you're watching it, are in the description. <laughs> okay, added one third cup. I want to get it to the point that I can knead it and roll it out, you know, to make it into noodles. Because right now I'm just making a bread. You don't want it too soupy because it'll just... Okay. Again, it's a little bit better, but I think it needs more. Another one-third cup. If I was nice to myself, I would have worked with a one-fourth. Right? Because then I'd have been like, oh, I added another half a cup. <laughs> but one-third is what I grabbed. And that's what we're going to go with. Now, I know a lot of people might be... Well cringing for so many reasons by now. <laughs> um, but people might be cringing that I like didn't pre-mix like the certain ingredients one way or another, but I'm gonna beat the shit out of this dough. I'm gonna knead it really well. So it's gonna definitely come together pretty well. And all those things will get worked into it. I'm not nice to my dough. I require specific things of her. So I beat her into compliance. <laughs> This will be the video that cancels me. People are like, oh my god. <laughs> it's still, it's getting better. A little bit better, but now I think it just needs just, I'm just going to do one more one third. And then I'd be like, that's not, that's too thick. Let's add um, a tablespoon of water or something like that. But we'll, we'll get there. We'll see what happens. Okay. Now it starts to fight you to work in the flour, you know, but the cool thing about this hook or any fork you use is go into your dough, no matter what type of dough you're working with, and cut it open. Like, oh, I'm knock that shit over. Um, and start cutting it open, right? Like, because what happens is you get into, like, where there's still moisture, <laughs> so you can get your flour into it. You could use your hands if you wanted to, but then they're like a hardcore mess, and... There's no need for that. So I think I've gotten it to the point that I can roll it out. I'm not ready to roll it out yet. I just, I'm thinking to myself, what will the consistency be like when I'm done kneading it? Okay, I'm gonna move this back so you can actually see me abuse this dough. Um, I'm gonna throw some um, flour onto here. I'm gonna put my dough out. 
I'm gonna move my hair out of the way. Not because I don't make my family eat my hair, <laughs> but it just it gets in my way more than anything. That makes so many of you never want to eat food at my house. <laughs> but let's be real. We've all had that dish that we, you know, love very much that our family made for us. And we're like, mom, <laughs> or like, like mom hair <laughs> or whatever hair, you know. So now I'm just trying to get this into the, let me, there's no way not to show you my boobs while I adjust the camera. Okay, there we go. So I'm doing like an initial need here. I'm going to treat it just like it's sourdough bread, right? Because it, it kind of is. Again, this really might not work. I might end up with like little biscuits, <laughs> but I, I think it's pretty close to the ratios of um, like my noodle recipe. So in theory, if I roll it out thin enough, it should turn into noodles, right? Yeah, now I'm going to start it, okay? <laughs> when you beat something up, no matter what type of dough it is, unless it's like pastry, something you're trying to make really flaky. When you're making something like um, bread of any variety, I'm not just like taking my anger out on this. And I'm going to have to add flour as I go, as I feel are being sticky. You break down the gluten molecules, right? And that makes it even easier for the sourdough bacteria to do her thing. But it also just makes for a better texture. And it feels nice sometimes. I'm like, fucking kids. <laughs> or whatever you're mad about, you know? Or sometimes you don't even have to be mad about a specific thing, but really work this dough. It really feels like bread more than noodle dough. I will admit that now. But again, the good news is, if this didn't work, you, you don't see this right now. <laughs> I'm not afraid of failures. I'm just, you know, not going to make you watch, like, what is it, we're already on 17 minutes. I'm not going to make you watch a pretty long video to see if something works or not. Or, and then it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. We're in a weird winter storm right now where it's not super cold out. It's snowing, which means it's below freezing, but, um... Too much wood on the wood stove. See my cheeks? It's like, it's probably like 75 or 78 degrees in here. And I'm a cold-blooded creature. <laughs> so I'm like, it's house balls. But I don't want to open the windows just yet. I will. But maybe, but then you lose all the heat and then you just got to build a fire again. So you don't have to need it this long if you don't want to. There, There's not really any rules here. Again, I made this up. Okay. I don't know, I think it could be a decent noodle dough. The thing that I'm concerned about with how soft it is, right? See how that's wanting to stick to my hand? Uh, noodle doughs typically are kind of like, not tough, but they're like, you know, ooh. <laughs> they're a bit thicker, is I'm a little worried that when I go to use my, my noodle cutter or to cut it out, that it might stick. I'm not gonna use a rolling machine. I actually don't have one of those. Um, used to lost it a long time ago like I didn't like leave it somewhere I like lost a bunch of my stuff um so but now you see I'm just twisting it I'm just getting the dough to sit well I'm probably only gonna let this I want them chewy so I'm gonna let it rise for about an hour and I think that should do it I don't want it to go much further than that because then it'll get even um runnier you know like a sourdough bread you could probably use discard to do this recipe too if you didn't want it chewy or less chewy. Put some flour in the bowl so it doesn't stick all bad. There it is. <laughs> so we, uh, let's, let's take a close look at this. Let me, oh, I can't flip this one around. Hmm. New camera. New, I mean, new phone with a new camera on it. Let me grab this and take you for an upside down, upside down ride. Here we go. Wait, wait, wait. Oh my God, this is so professional. Okay, there's the dough. <laughs> I'm having a look. That's what it looks like right now. Let's see what it looks like in an hour when we come back. All right, see you in a second. Ta-da, it's been an hour. <laughs> um, there's not really been a whole lot of change to her. Um, I opened the window though, because again, it was really hot in here. 
Um, and so it's not super hot in here if, if you're in a really warm climate. Like I didn't sit this somewhere warm, like you would like sourdough bread or some other type of bread you were rising. But I'm just gonna tip the bowl to show you. She kind of, oh, oh. <laughs> she kind of just flattened the flour that we put in the bottom did its job <laughs> to keep her from sticking. She kind of just spread out so like the dough relaxed. And I can see like the very beginning, let me just pick her up. I can see like the very beginning of starting to like rise, um, but I think about an hour is about enough. You Again, I want this to be a dough, and you can see when I push on it, it kind of springs back, which means it's, it's rising and active. So let's see if I can actually turn this into noodles. I also realized, because I'm the type of person that re-watches my videos, that I could have done it differently. I could have not added the broth because I overshot my recipe calculations. I could have just used the liquid that's in the sourdough starter to be the liquid that would have been in like um, the half a cup of liquid that I added, right? So you can try this without that half a cup and see what happens and it will be your own recipe. I'm gonna put this dough down. <laughs> um, okay. Also right now the storm has gotten like 10 times worse. So you're gonna hear my wind chimes, the blizzard out there. So I'm gonna flower my counter pretty well. I'm gonna move this back. Okay. So, flour. Dough. <laughs> oh my gosh. Rolling pin. I couldn't find my smaller one, so I'm gonna use that one. Pull my pants up so you don't have to look at my ass when I turn around. Dog bark. <laughs> Hair's in the way. You know what? It's rolling out pretty well. Right, you probably can't see that all too well. Let me, five dollars <laughs> for the boob view. Um, okay, so I want these kind of thin, but I also don't like, oh, I also don't like my noodles paper thin. I want like, I want girth <laughs> to my noodles. I'm gonna flip this over. That way it doesn't start to stick on any one particular area. Now, you think that this would make this look like a success, but I gotta be able to cut these noodles. That's where I'm worried about when I, when I put too much liquid in it, right? So I think to help, it's not gonna roll off. I think to lessen that probability, I'm gonna put some flour on her, which will help her dry a little bit too when I hang her up. Where the hell did that go? I was like, oh, get these things out so you don't lose the, oh, there it is. Sit it on a completely unrelated counter. April, that's the best way to find it. This is my noodle cutter. Um, it was like four bucks on Amazon. It's just a noodle cutter. I don't like the tiny ones, but it makes nice wide noodles. Let's see what happens. You ready? Should I just go down the middle? No, I have to go from this side and then this side. So it evenly cuts them, um, but I can move. This a little bit. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Now the idea is this is just a rolling pin that um, cuts your noodles for you, right? It's pretty self-explanatory. But it also, you see, you can't see, you can't see shit. Um, look, it's pushing the dough forward, right? And so it's also making them all like evenly, um, back up you go, evenly the same like thickness of noodle. All right, now I'm gonna do this side. If you mind the dishes in my sink, feel free to come and do them for me. <laughs> I was like, you know, if I'm gonna make these cooking videos, it can't be like, I can't like have to take like hours to make my kitchen look more like a studio, right? I'm like, I'm living in this shit and I have not done the dishes yet today because the kids left today. So they aren't here to do the dishes. So I'm dragging ass. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm going to push it back a little bit further so you see what I'm doing. What would be a real power move or at least piss people off? Is if I posted this anyway, even though the recipe didn't work. <laughs> no, it, I'm, again, if you're watching it, it worked out. So now I want to cut that, which means I need something sharp, big, capable, planned for. 
anymore. Let me find a pizza cutter. Oh, I just saw it the other day. Um, fine, I won't use a pizza cutter. I'm just going to use a knife because I can't find any cutting implements beyond knives. I'm going to cut these in half because I don't need like two foot long, two foot long noodles. Uh, you like how I'm getting better at my words as the video progresses. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm cutting the length of it in half. I don't know if these have worked yet because I haven't tried to take them up off. And my spatula that I use is dirty. I know that because I used it yesterday. <laughs> Um, sometimes I take a big long spatula, like a really long, like barbecue one, and I just go under all of my noodles. So, but we're not going to do that because I don't have that option. This is fancy. Watch me do a magic trick. Magic! <laughs> no, um, it is just, um, a pasta hanger upper. I used to use just, like, um, coat hangers, like, not the thin wire ones, but the thicker plastic ones. Um, it, those work well to hang. You don't have to go buy, like, a pasta hanger. I was just like, this thing was on sale last Black Friday for, like, 15 bucks. And I was like, I can do that for myself. <laughs> um, okay. Moment of truth. I'm just gonna try to pick up a noodle. Tis noodle-like. But I wonder what happens when I hang them. Right, like, is it just gonna, because it's a moist dough, is it just gonna, like like sad droop off I don't think so it seems to be well I mean it could my brain was pretty confident about that not happening right sometimes with that noodle cutter that I used um it doesn't go all the way through it usually does and but my dough isn't very stiff so I'm afraid if I yeah like I stretched that so I think I'm half tempted to try to use a knife and then oh it's oh there we go right and then I can just come on here and in theory spread them out a little bit and disconnect them with my finger right I don't know if this is gonna work I feel like this might be weird like strands of bread within my stroganoff tonight because <laughs> that's what I'm making. I made a pot roast last night that had a bone in it so I could turn that into a broth and a gravy-like substance with mushrooms and then serve it with um, these noodles. But I'm not feeling, I mean I am and am not feeling confident. What if I just did big noodle sheets, right? My main thing is I feel like it's too moist. I feel like I shot myself in the foot by putting that extra cup of liquid in it. So we'll call this sourdough noodle recipe one. <laughs> if anything, I should probably just post this video for entertainment value. Um, they might not be very pretty. These are rustic noodles. All right. So I'm not gonna make you watch me do this with all of them because this is like only like a quarter of the noodles that are here. So let me get them all hung up, and then the magic trick, they'll just be on there, okay? Okay. All the noodles are now on the rack. <laughs> oh, God. Um, they look noodle-like, right? I also should have said that you don't have to buy one of these to cut noodles either. You can use a pizza cutter, because unlike me, if you can find a pizza cutter, that's great. But also, you could just use a knife and run it down there. Uh, my grandma used to take um, like little biscuit cutters or like little lids and cut out circles so you'd have like circle noodles, you know, like it doesn't really matter what shape you cut your noodle into people. There's no rules. You could cut them into stars, got hearts, you know. <laughs> um, so I was thinking about I'm going to let these hang until like it's dinner time, right? This will be the last thing that I add um, into um, the equation, god damn, into the food that I'm cooking. <laughs> Oh my god. Um, but I was thinking about test cooking a noodle. Should we do that and see like what happens? Because maybe I should do that for my own frustration. So I'm not like, oh my god, it's all like little breadsticks. So let's do that. So I'm gonna instantly boil some water. Give me a second. There's actually not gonna be a magic trick involved this time. I have to wait for my water to boil. <laughs> and uh, because I'm watching it, logically, it's going to take forever. And ever, and ever, and ever. 
Noodles have joined us at the party. Let's sacrifice three of them into this boiling water. See what happens. Um, I did notice that the ones that were a little thinner rolled on the other side are kind of stretched out. But look, I just made like a double length noodle. It didn't stretch out as much as I thought it did when I looked at it, but I can see that it's thicker down here and thinner up here. Again, it's because I added that stupid half a cup extra of broth. Shame on me. <laughs> um, okay, let's see what happens to these four unlucky individuals. And they go. Okay, I'm gonna put the timer on, let's say like two minutes. Three minutes, three minutes is right. So, okay, let's just watch what they do. So they appear to be boiling. I mean, I think we were all gonna guess that. <laughs> but I wanted to see like, ooh, they seem to be firming up. You know, like, were they gonna like, just like, I don't know, what the fuck would you call it, milk out? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, were they gonna like, fall apart? Or were they gonna like actually turn into a noodle? They look, they look like they're deciding to go noodle. So, let's see what they're like when they're done. We made noodles. <laughs> now, I tested one, there's a minute left on the timer, let me turn that off. I tested one at two minutes and they were like just right. You could almost maybe do a minute and a half. Remember, fresh pasta cooks faster. I would argue to say that the thinner stuff, you need to roll it thicker. This recipe needs to be rolled relatively thick, which might make that noodle cutter of mine challenging, but let's, let's unearth a noodle. It's a noodle, right? It's pretty thick. I like that. I mean, it's not so like, you're going to be able to chew it. You're all right. <laughs> um, it has noodle-like consisting consistency to it when I ate a piece. I don't, I don't know if I'm to the point where I should be eating stuff on video. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but let's see. Let me, let me, I'll do it for you. I love you that much. I'll slurp down. So this is just a noodle. <laughs> a hot noodle. Yeah, those are noodle-like. It's noodle-like. It's a fucking noodle. <laughs> It has a good bit of chew to it, but not like it's hard to chew. Like it springs back in your mouth, which I don't mind. I like a chewy noodle. If you like a delicate noodle, something that's like no bounce back, just breaks in your mouth. This isn't, this isn't that type of noodle. Like you and her aren't gonna get along. But damn, I think I made noodles. I made sourdough noodles. Now, um, my sourdough, just as a disclaimer, um, so most places where you live, you have an individual, like, yeast to your area, right? And so when you think of sourdough from, like, San Francisco, it's, like, really tart, right? Where I live in Northeast Oregon, apparently for me and my sourdough and whatever yeast we've got floating around in my house in the mountains here, um, my sourdough is really mild. Like, I have to really ferment some dough like well over 24 hours for it to get a decent amount of tang to it. And I don't mind that because I, I can use it to make things that don't necessarily taste tangy. So the noodles that I've just made for myself don't have a tang to them. But if your bread um, that you typically make has like a really like sourdough flavor to it, um, you know, your noodles are gonna taste like sourdough. And then if you let that rise longer, like, or if you let it ferment overnight in the fridge, maybe, it would probably make it, it would definitely make it more um, digestive healthy for people who have problems with gluten because um, as it sits, basically the bacteria that's in my beautiful crusty little jar here, she is literally eating the, the, the flour. That's what she eats. That's why she's all bubbly and stuff. Like, basically, I mean, not to gross you out, this is just how yeast works. When it rises and like that, like, these little yeasty bacteria are like farting. <laughs> they're eating and they're farting and it creates bubbles and it rises up and it's all happy and then you give it more and it keeps rising and it rises your bread for you, but that's how yeast from the store works too, uh, really. Um, so, but, you know, I, if these uh, noodles were kind of tangy, like sourdoughy, I still think they would go well uh, with something like a stroganoff or, I mean, even arguably spaghetti sauce, you know, like a nice tang to it because there is some spaghetti sauces have a little bit of like tang to them from the tomato. Um, but you could also just eat buttered noodles. No one's going to judge you. 
So, um, this has been one hell of a video and we made noodles together. Like we literally just made this up. I have no idea what I'm doing. I mean, I kind of do, but not really. Um, I might try to make it again without the, um, extra half cup of broth, but arguably they still worked out. I would say again, roll them on a little thicker level if you want like a nice chewy noodle. And then I'm not sure how well these thinner ones will hold up when cooked. Uh, they might break apart. Um, I cook the ones that were a little thicker for about two minutes. They were perfect. You could probably go down to a minute and a half if you don't like your pasta like all the way done. These little thin ladies would probably take like a minute and be done. So um, tonight's dinner that I'm gonna make is going to have a variety of doneness of noodles. And they'll eat it anyways, because that's all the fuck I'm making. <laughs> so if you like these really just random videos and just watching me be a real human, make sure to, you know, subscribe, like, comment, turn on notifications. If you're watching this car wreck <laughs> on YouTube, come find me on Instagram. If you're watching on Instagram, come find me on YouTube. I share all kinds of information, usually about herbalism, but you guys ask for cooking. And remember, you get what you ask for. <laughs> So also, I'm pretty sure you're smart enough to do this. I don't really know what we did here. I mean, I know we made a noodle, <laughs> but it, you know, but just like, don't be afraid even when it comes to cooking to experiment. And I even, you know, it's a little scary because, you know, times are tough and, you know, food is scarce for some of us and, um, but food has been scarce for a lot of us for a long time. But sometimes when you get inventive in the kitchen like this, you can end up saving yourself money, learning how to make more with what you have, and just generally having way more fun and less stress in the kitchen. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.